Good morning, St. Michael. We're so glad to see everybody here. It's wonderful to see so many nice, shiny faces. Today's the day that we focus on those who have gone before us, those who are saints in heaven, but also uh, saints on earth. We, as Lutherans, we have a whole different definition of saints. And so we're happy to uh, be talking about that today. And speaking of saints, we have a new little saint in the uh, congregation, um, Lauren and Mike Burgess's daughter, Lauren and Grayson, her husband, had a little girl yesterday. And guess what her name is? Anderson. Anderson. They're going to call her Andy, apparently. Um, if you would like to sign a card, it's right here on the front pew. So we've, we did started one in Sunday school, and if you'd like to just write a quick hello in there, that would be great. We'd love to have you do that. Welcome, little one. Andy, we'll be praying for them in our prayers today. Uh, a couple of other announcements. We will be doing our All Saints uh, recognition. Uh, we have a list of the names that we received in the, um, in the bulletin. If you have a name that you either neglected to give to us or somehow it didn't get included, um, go ahead and, and write it on one of the little blue sheets. And uh, by, at the end of announcements, just uh, raise your hand and we'll gather those and we'll include those as well. Um, uh, this Tuesday, Election Day, our office will be closed uh, because we, uh, we don't have elections here, but we do have elections at uh, St. Andrew's Presbyterian, and Chris and I are both poll managers, so we're going to be heading over there for the day to uh, do poll managing for that. Uh, Wednesday, Bible study at 10 a.m., and at 11.30, the ladies are meeting to do the uh, Assemble the Homebound goodie bags, and if you'll notice at the bottom of page 10, there are donations needed for those, so if, uh, if you have something that you can give, uh, let Chris know, and she'll, uh, she'll be able to, to help you with that. There is no yoga this week. The, uh, the yogi is a newlywed, so uh, we pray for Van and uh, <laughs> what is Vicky, that Van and Vicky on their marriage last week. Um, we are doing a Christmas Helping Hands tree with Irmo High School, and uh, we have taken on, um, I think, 28 children to buy gifts for for Christmas. Uh, there's a note in the bulletin. Uh, it's basically a list of kind of what, what their age is, what their gender is, and all that sort of thing. And so if you would like to help with that project, uh, I believe they might be in the narthex, or Chris uh, has them in the office. So just check in with us, and we will see uh, how that goes. All right. Any other prayers or any other concerns from the congregation? Wonderful. Um, we did hear today that uh, Joanne Smoke has had a fall, and so she wasn't able to come to Sunday school today. So we want to remember Joanne in our prayers uh, today as well. All right. Any additional names? Anybody got a blue card? Here we go. Okay. Her name? Renee. Renee. We'll include that. Also, on a, on a sad note or a bad note, um, our locking mailbox was pried open sometime from uh, Friday night until this morning. Um, just FYI for those of you at home and also anybody here, if you mailed a check to St. Michael sometime after, let's say, Tuesday, of this past week, uh, please be alert that um, somebody has taken checks out. Um, there was one uh, that came from the bank, and I think it might be the Collies. So just double check. Um, uh, stupid me, I put some outgoing mail on Friday afternoon in the mailbox to be taken out Saturday morning. I opened the mail compartment, and I saw that there were several envelopes, but they weren't that big, so I thought they would wait until this morning. And so I locked the thing back up and, uh, and went on my way. And if I had just taken them out and taken them to the office, we wouldn't have had that problem. But anyway, so much for, uh, for trying to be expediting uh, my life. <laughs> I should have just taken the time. All right. Well, let's take a few moments to prepare ourselves for worship.
I invite you to stand if you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Revelation. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and honor and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving 
and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them all, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today you're going to hear the word saints over and over and over again. Now the interesting thing about that is that we have sort of this image of saints. You know, they don't do anything wrong. They're, they're, they have always have this little halo or nimbus around their heads so that people know just how holy they are. They live what we think of sometimes as impossible lives. How could someone be so unselfish? How could someone be so bold that they are killed or martyred? How can somebody do so much good that they are recognized globally for that good? It's almost embarrassing when you think about it. I mean, I've heard that Mother Teresa was kind of mean. Did you? And maybe St. Francis ignored a bird once. You know, we could go through all the saints. Maybe somebody who lost something, St. Anthony couldn't find. Right? Well, we have been released from that notion. We have been released to look at saints in a different way. We look at saints not just as special people that the church has designated for us to know and remember. Saints are all those who have been baptized and follow Jesus. Saints are just like you and me. And the funny thing about it is Martin Luther gave us this concept which probably is not the the perfect thing to say on All Saints Sunday when we kind of wallow in the saintliness of those we love. But Martin Luther said, Simo justus et peccata. And that's Latin for same time saint and sinner. I think if you were able to go back in time and talk to any one of sort of the legitimate saints, the, the ones that have been designated as having done miraculous things or endured terrible uh, affliction, I think they probably would be the first to say that they didn't live up to God's standard. They would be the first to see their own sinfulness they would be the first to know that it is our holy dependence upon God that really, really brings us joy and brings us a sense of being connected to each other, to the church, to God. Really, it's just a big club that we are a part of, the club of the saints. Everybody here is a saint. Everybody out there is a saint. And so we have to sort of acknowledge that saintliness is not unattainable as long as you understand how you define it. And if we define saintliness as a sinner who manages occasionally to do God's will, then we are all saints. And there's a chance for us, right? And so we have now Jesus, who has been teaching his disciples for several years now. He's been trying to tell them about the kingdom of God and how different the kingdom of God is from the kingdom of humans. Now, I'm not so sure that the disciples were the brightest tools in the shed, but, you know, we can see that Jesus time and time again sort of calls them to attention, calls them to understanding, 
calls them to account. And you know, occasionally they rise to the occasion and they say the right thing and do the right thing and, and think the right thing. But just like saints who are also sinners, they are learning and they are changing and they are growing in their faith growing in their understanding of what God was at work doing in the world. You know, we've heard a lot in the last couple of weeks about Armageddon, about the end times, about how everything is sort of culminating. John from Revelation was right. The end of the world is near. But what we fail to recognize is that the revelation of St. John is not about doom and gloom. It's not a warning about the end times. It is a celebration of saintliness. It is a celebration of what the future is for all of us who've been baptized in Christ. And oh my gosh, it is poetry. It is poetry to read the revelation of St. John. He has been given an insight into what it means to live as a saint in the midst of all the sin of the world. We know that the revelation of St. John was written to and about and for seven churches in Turkey, modern day Turkey. They were being persecuted. They were being chased. They were being killed. And they were in despair. And John hears from God a prophecy. Very much like the Old Testament prophecies. John has a prophecy and he sends that letter to those seven churches. It's not a letter that says, hey, get in your bomb shelter, it's about to end. It's not a letter that says, Hey, you know, watch out. Somebody's coming to get you. It is a letter that talks about hope. It basically says to them that God has their back. That no matter what happens to them, no matter what the world will do to them, God is there. And God is there to comfort and to care for even the dirtiest of those who are part of those churches. There are all these interesting paradoxes in the revelation of St. John. Talk about being washed white by blood. Whose blood? The blood of the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ. And so if you are promoting that Jesus Christ is the center of your life, if you, are, if you are declaring that Jesus Christ is the center of your life and your hope and your future, then you can endure anything. You can live through anything. And so John is offering these words of hope and comfort to very specific communities. And instead of sort of piling up all of this stuff about the end times and piling up all this stuff about what's really meant by this and really meant by that. Why can't we simply accept that John is writing to a community who needs to hear a word of hope? Wow. What do you need to hear today? Why are we praying for peace in Afghanistan and, and Ukraine and Africa and Palestine and, and Israel on our own streets? Is it just a habit? Is it just us sort of not knowing what else to do so we throw out a little prayer hoping that God is out there listening? 
if that letter of revelation, that, that beautiful prophecy were to be written to us today, it would say the same thing. It would assure us of God's love and care for not just us, but for all who are saints and sinners. It would be a lesson to us that there is a bright tomorrow no matter what happens. It's easy when we say goodbye to a loved one who's suffered and struggled for years or months. It's not so easy when we have a sudden loss. Sometimes a loved one, sometimes a job, sometimes uh, something that we love dearly. And in our grief, we sometimes lose sight of the gift of God's presence. God can help us endure anything. But we need to be open and receptive to that message that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. And that we as the saints who are also sinners have a message for the world. The message for the world can be best summarized in the Beatitudes. The message for the world, be meek, be kind. Find ways to, to help others. Understand that the kingdom of God is not about our personal power and the judgment we can declare on the world. But the kingdom of God is about good things, about salvation, about God's presence in our very lives. And so again, in a very poetic way, Jesus teaches the disciples about how to live as he teaches us through the Beatitudes in Matthew. May we hear those words, not just with our ears, but with our hearts. Amen. Yes, we are singing all seven verses, by the way. If you need to sit down and take a rest in three, in three, four, and five, feel free. It tells a story. Say
Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and light, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, the church triumphant gathers around your throne to praise you. We join them in worship and remember your sustaining grace in every generation. Heal our divisions. Show us unity in your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Creator, we marvel at your creation revealed in the cycle of seasons, changing landscapes and the rise and fall of ocean tides. Turn us from selfish consumption and open us to gentle healing of the earth so all creation thrives. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Advocate, we lift grateful hearts for the ability to vote and elect leaders. Grant wisdom to those who will be elected and safety to poll workers. May civic leaders serve the whole community, especially all who are underrepresented or oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Healer, bless the brokenhearted and all who mourn. Send your compassion to all who grieve. Grant wholeness to those who are sick and accompany the dying. Be near to all who need you. We pray especially today for Bill, Joyce, Marla, Marla, Don, Don Jeanette, 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 Jackie, Jackie Barbara, Barbara, Danny, Danny David, David, Christy, Christy Renee, 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 Mickey, Mickey Terry, Terry, Bob, Bob Grady, Grady, Melinda, Melinda Joanne, 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 Marlene, Marlene and John. Be with all of those who are in service to our country. We pray today especially for Tyler, Tyler. Samantha, Samantha, Zachary, Zachary Grant, Grant, Phil, Phil Colin, Colin, Griffin, Griffin Brian, Brian, Hunter, Hunter and Colt. Hello. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus Holy Comforter, we pray for this congregation that the promise of your new life may be shared and experienced. We pray for the funeral ministry of this congregation. The families and friends seeking your love find it here. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus Holy One, for the saints who now rest in your mercy, we give you thanks. We remember their witness of faithfulness and love. John Martin. Mel. Keith. Leslie. Terry. Rebecca. Allison. Stacy. Doug. 
Mike. Blaine. Praise to you for the eternal life they have been given through Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. With all the saints of Africa and Asia, Europe and the Americas, India, Australia and the islands, we praise you. O oh God, for creating the worlds. With all the baptized, the old and the young, the weak and the strong, the famous and the forgotten, we bless you, O oh God. For providing mortals with food. With all the faithful in tents and mansions, cities and farms, present and past, we worship you, O oh God, for sheltering the generations. With all your holy people who minister in the church, who serve the poor, who walk the way of the cross, we glorify you, O God, for journeying with us in Jesus. With Paul and the evangelists, we remember the meal of your son. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With Peter and all the martyrs, we honor Christ's death, saying, Amen. Amen. With Mary Magdalene and all the apostles, we proclaim his resurrection, shouting, Amen. Amen. With John, the theologians, and the mystics, we celebrate Christ present with us, exclaiming, Amen. Amen. With the Virgin Mary and all who sang of your greatness, we pray for the power of the Spirit. Imbue this gathering, this bread, and this cup, with the merciful body and blood of Christ, form us into a communion of service and infuse your earth with the wholeness we seek. With grandparents and godparents, with the Orthodox, Roman Catholics, Protestants, Pentecostals, Evangelicals, and Independents, lead us to a future we cannot yet see and at the end draw all humanity to yourself. Now with all the family you saved by your love, we shout blessing, blessing. glory, Lord. Wisdom, Wisdom. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, honor, honor. Power. power, might, might. be to you, O God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Christ's table.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. I want to see some dancing around. Beloved of God, go in peace and serve and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.